And we begin tonight with a look back. It was on this day in 1938. Five people were killed after a type of tsunami hit Holland. 85 years later, researchers say tsunamis in the Great Lakes happen more often than you think. News 8's Demetria Sanders in studio live tonight with more. Well, Brian, researchers say there's dozens of meteor tsunamis that happen in the Great Lakes each year. While most are not noticeable, large ones can have a serious impact. Unlike tsunamis created by earthquakes, meteor tsunamis are caused by weather events such as severe thunderstorms and squalls. Where it could actually create like a tidal wave, a big wave of water that's going to come across the lake and hit the shoreline. While they're considered relatively rare, researchers say the Great Lakes averages around 106 of them each year. Dave Benjamin, a co-founder of the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project, says the vast majority don't become fatal, but they do carry that potential, pointing to a meteor tsunami that hit Warren Dune State Park in Sawyer 20 years ago. It was 4th of July where seven people drowned in one afternoon because of the storm that had come through. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the uncertainty surrounding meteor tsunamis make them difficult to predict and warn people about ahead of time. But scientists have identified the conditions likely to cause a meteor tsunami and are working towards finding ways to forecast them. You never know what you might discover from the research that's being done, right? Um, on, on the flip side, I think we really do need to invest more in water safety for like public education, public rescue equipment and lifeguards. That really should have a high priority. Benjamin also says beachgoers should be cautious when they see that the weather is worsening. If there's lightning, you should definitely get off the beach. And, and those are also um, weather events that are going to be accompanying these storms. Now, Benjamin says meteor tsunamis can also produce dangerous currents. He says if you're struggling with water that is above your head, you should flip over on your back, float, and follow a safe path out of the water. Brian. 